Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor. Thank you for your continued support. Now this may just be my most niche video yet, but I must say I am ridiculously excited to make it, so I hope you enjoy. Today's video is really an analysis of personality types, specifically how they are used in storytelling through the lens of my favorite personality typing system, the Enneagram. For today's video, I will be using the following books, as well as this website, all linked in the description box down below as resources. The Enneagram is an ancient personality typing system based on a single circle with nine equidistant points or types. The nine points are connected to one another by a series of inner lines, which help indicate growth and stress directions for each type. While we each have a core number on the Enneagram with which we identify, the system is incredibly complex and nuanced, with subtypes, wings, directions of integration and disintegration, centers, levels of development, and more. To discuss all of these would result in a video that would be far too long, but I highly recommend delving more into all of these nuances and subtleties if this video today interests you. I will be discussing each of the nine core types, characters within the Nancy Drew series that I believe identify as those types for examples, and then analyzing how that character trope or personality is used within the games as part of the mystery storytelling. Because this video involves nuanced discussions about characters, plot spoilers may inevitably be shared. You have been warned. Let's begin by discussing the first type on the Enneagram, which also just so happens to be my own type. Type number one, the perfectionist or the reformer. Ones are a rational, idealistic type, characterized as principled, purposeful, self-controlled, and perfectionistic. Their basic fear is of being corrupt, evil, or defective while their basic desire is to be good and balanced and to have integrity. Type 1s at their core want to do good and want to improve everything around them. There is no such thing as good enough for a type 1. Everything could always be better. Type 1s develop strong moral codes that they follow rigidly and hold themselves and others to incredibly high standards. They believe that striving for perfection will justify them in their own eyes and in the eyes of others. Unfortunately, this perfectionism may eventually become such a powerful, all-encompassing part of their personality that ones often struggle to separate from it and see beyond the severe, unforgiving inner critic. In the Nancy Drew series, I believe that, like myself, Corrine Myers from Warnings at Waverly Academy Jeff Akers from Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake, Ethel Bossini from Curse of Blackmore Manor, and Guadalupe Comillo from White Wolf of Icicle Creek are all ones. In all of these characters, we see perfectionism in forms like rigid adherence to the rules, a strict system of organization, an unwavering commitment to scholarly pursuits, and a strong belief in a right way of doing things. We also see strong moral codes, as each of these characters have highly developed value systems, which may lead to judgment when others don't live up to them. The way ones are used in the series is interesting, because it almost seems like their primary roles are as sources of information. They tell about rules and requirements, world building. They tell us what we need to do and when, task list. They tell us what other characters should be doing but are not, character development, and they tell us about their area of expertise in order to share knowledge. Given how stereotypically organized, rigid, and judgmental ones can be, this makes a great deal of sense. This is kind of how ones work in real life as well. If you need to get something done and you want it done well, talk to a one. They'll know just what to do. Next is type number two, the helper. 
Twos are a caring interpersonal type, characterized as generous, demonstrative, people-pleasing, and possessive. Their basic fear is of being unwanted or unworthy of love, while their basic desire is to feel loved. Type twos at their core want to be loved, needed, and appreciated. As a result, twos often go above and beyond in their pursuit to care for others, frequently giving up their time, energy, and resources in the name of helping other people. They firmly believe in the importance of spreading kindness and generosity, but often struggle to apply that own love to themselves and balance self-care with compassion for others. This can result in twos constantly feeling like they are spread far too thin, always seeking validation of their own worth solely through sacrifice for others. In the Nancy Drew series, I see Maddie Jensen from Stay Tuned for Danger, Takai Nagai from Shadow at the Water's Edge, Elizabeth Grimmer's daughter from Sea of Darkness, and Ned Nickerson as Type 2s. All of these characters have a strong tendency to set aside their own emotional needs in the name of supporting their partners, friends, grandchildren, etc. They are always looking out for others and even go so far as to excuse the behavior of others, carrying the emotional brunt and responsibilities all on their own. We also see several of these characters hitting their breaking points, when the weight of carrying everyone else around becomes too heavy and they finally just need to snap. Type 2s in this series seem to function primarily as buddy characters. These are the characters who are generally kind and helpful to Nancy, often giving her whatever she needs. They give her things, they give her advice, they take time to explain things to Nancy that she may not understand about other characters. They are constantly giving and helping, which in a mystery game makes them incredibly nice to have around. Let's just hope that they take some time to recuperate after the mystery. Next is type number three, the Achiever. Threes are a success-oriented, pragmatic type, characterized as adaptable, excelling, driven, and image-conscious. Their basic fear is of being worthless, and their basic desire is to feel valuable and worthwhile. Type threes, at their core, are motivated, productive, successful go-getters who can accomplish an awful lot. They believe in themselves and have a unique talent for recognizing their individual capabilities, honing them into whatever sphere of success their culture deems most important. However, the more threes focus on outside validation, achievements, and productivity, the more alienated they become from their true selves, their feelings, and their inherent worth. In the Nancy Drew series, some classic threes, in my opinion, are Izzy Romero from Warnings at Waverly Academy, Brady Armstrong from The Final Scene, Tino Balducci from Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon, and Tony Scolari from Alibi and Ashes. All of these characters have their eyes on some sort of prize, seeking academic achievement, political achievement, fame, and fortune. They are deeply success-oriented, to the point where their achievements, and perhaps even more importantly, their image of achievement, is their main motivation. They all have a veneer of confidence, and while talented, they all also require outside validations of their talents in order to truly see them. Type threes in the series are interesting because they often function either as culprits or as red herrings for the culprits. These characters are seen as willing to do what it takes to accomplish their goals, which in a mystery series may result in some questionable behaviors that Nancy can use for building cases against suspects. Of course, not all threes are culprits or engage in questionable behavior to achieve their goals, but in mysteries, they often fall into this trope. They're the characters that we immediately suspect because of their ambition, for better or worse. Next up is type number four, the individualist. Fours are a sensitive, introspective type, characterized as expressive, dramatic, self-absorbed, and temperamental. Their basic fear is that they have no identity or significance, and their basic desire is to find themselves and their significance. 
Type 4s at their core struggle often with feeling misunderstood, like they don't quite fit in in this world, and that they are missing something within themselves that would just make everything click. While navigating these difficulties can lead to a lot of emotional turmoil and constant struggles with self-worth and self-confidence, Type 4s also are uniquely creative, honest, and romantic, and have a powerful, intense connection to the mysteries of life. In the Nancy Drew series, I see Henry Bollet from Legend of the Crystal Skull, Wade Thornton from Ghost of Thornton Hall, Niobe Papadaki from Labyrinth of Lies, and Colin Baxter from The Phantom of Venice as classic Type 4s. All of these characters are moody and philosophical, preferring to speak of deeper topics and lamenting when their intentions or words are misunderstood. They all have creative pursuits, and they all clearly express their individualism. It seems like Type 4s function as a way to add depth, realism, and emotion to the Nancy Drew series. When they're included in games, they help to add a deeper level of meaning to the plot, purely by existing as themselves and discussing matters that other characters might shy away from. They aren't shy about sharing what they think and feel when it comes to the problems at hand, the other characters, and even beyond that to just general thoughts about the world. Next on our marvelous circle is type number five, Mr. Wizard Kitten's type, the investigator. Fives are intense cerebral types characterized as perceptive, innovative, secretive, and isolated. Their basic fear is of being useless, helpless, or incapable, and their basic desire is to be capable and competent. Type fives at their core have a deep inner desire to find answers, resulting in a relentless pursuit of knowledge, coupled by deep insecurities about their ability to function successfully in the world. Type fives feel that they are unable to do things as well as others, and so they turn to their inner world, their minds, and spend a great deal of time cultivating their knowledge base in order to gain a feeling of self-confidence. This results in many fives becoming encyclopedias, genuine masters in their areas of expertise. In the Nancy Drew series, we see type five characteristics in Henrik Vanderhoon from Secret of the Scarlet Hand, Charlena Purcell from Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon, Richard Topham from Secret of the Old Clock, and Katie Firestone from Danger on Deception Island. All of these characters are experts in their fields, glyphs, Wild West history, mysticism, marine biology. These characters are also all quite introverted and do not rely heavily on social validation, another key characteristic of type fives. Somewhat similarly to type ones, type fives seem to function primarily as knowledge disseminators. While ones in the series seem to give us information in the form of rules, regulations, and procedures, fives seem to just give us pure, unadulterated information. Their expertise helps inform Nancy in whatever case she is tackling at that time. Their relative social removal makes them feel distant and sometimes even conceited, but when it comes down to it, the Nancy Drew series type fives help us learn things, which is invaluable when solving a mystery. Moving clockwise, we next have type number six, the loyalist. Sixes are committed, security-oriented types characterized as engaging, responsible, anxious, and suspicious. Their basic fear is of being without support and guidance, and their basic desire is to have security and support. Type sixes at their core are reliable and consistent individuals who deeply value the relationships they have carefully chosen and cultivated. Their fear of abandonment and uncertainty leads to a pervasive background feeling of unsteadiness and fear, which causes them to frequently second-guess themselves and others. Within the Nancy Drew series, I see Ollie Randall from White Wolf of Icicle Creek, Joseph Hughes from The Final Scene, Joy Chent from The Haunted Carousel, and Lily Crew from Tomb of the Lost Queen as hallmark type sixes. 
all of these characters have important but complex relationships with authority figures, a classic sign of type 6, because of the constant push and pull of stability versus fear. They might jump to conclusions about problems around them, like the wolf for Ollie or the roller coaster accident for Joy, and or cling to their perceived mode of safety, like the theater for Joseph or Abdullah for Lily. I think sixes function in an interesting way in the series, because their constant questioning of themselves leads to Nancy also needing to constantly question what is going on around her. Sixes inadvertently, or sometimes purposefully, sow seeds of distrust about other characters and about the potential causes of the mystery. This ultimately leads to a deeper, more compelling mystery, because then there is more complexity for detectives to sift through. Type 6 is function to confuse us, which manages to make each mystery they're involved in even more mysterious. Next up is type number 7, the enthusiast. Sevens are busy, variety-seeking types, characterized as spontaneous, versatile, acquisitive, and scattered. Their basic fear is of being deprived or in pain, and their basic desire is to be satisfied, content, and to have their needs fulfilled. Type sevens, at their core, highly value freedom and happiness, and approach life with curiosity, optimism, and a sense of adventure. They are bright spots in the world, flexible and often unable to sit still for long. While moving so fast and with so much vivacity can be incredibly positive, sevens are frequently out of touch with their inner guidance and can become flaky, non-committal, or irresponsible. Type sevens within the Nancy Drew series show up in the likes of Ryan Kilpatrick from The Deadly Device, Professor Hotchkiss from Treasure in the Royal Tower, Sunny June from The Shattered Medallion, and Yumi Shimizu from Shadow at the Water's Edge. All of these characters are incredibly energetic and sporadic. They speak quickly, they're constantly doing something, they're hilarious, but also quite unpredictable and zany. The function of Type 7s in the series seems to be primarily as comedic relief. These characters are usually funny, and so, as a whole, bring some fun to the games. This is particularly true in games that are more dark overall, because then Type 7s add an important dash of variety, laughter, and lightness as a way of balancing out, oh, I don't know, murder and Yuri's? Nearing the end now, we have type number eight, the challenger. Eights are powerful, dominating types, characterized as self-confident, decisive, willful, and confrontational. Their basic fear is of being harmed or controlled by others, and their basic desire is to protect themselves and be in control of their own lives and destinies. Type eights at their core are independent and self-reliant, in constant pursuit of proving their strength and squelching any weakness as a form of defensiveness and protection. While often charismatic, powerful, and industrious, eights can often fall into a trap where their egos are so built up in order to protect themselves that they cannot see how they may be emotionally hurting themselves or others. I see type eight characteristics in the Nancy Drew series in the forms of Connie Watson from Secrets Can Kill, Renata Stoller from The Captive Curse, Gunnar Tonneson from Sea of Darkness, and Dwayne Powers from Stay Tuned for Danger. All of these characters are brutally honest and have a tell it like it is whether it hurts you or not mentality. They do what they want, go where they please, and say what they want without questioning any of it because they are in control, which means they feel safe. Type 8s who are emotionally unhealthy can become the most unforgiving of culprits within the series, or at the very least, as very suspicious suspects, because of their willingness to do whatever it takes to get what they want. Like Type 3s, the ambition and bravado of 8s cause them to become likely culprits, but not always. Type 8s can also function as valuable allies, characters who aren't afraid to truthfully speak about who they like and do not like, 
and what threats may be lurking nearby. Depending on the health and self-awareness of the particular eight, they can either become Nancy's worst nightmare or her greatest supporter. And finally, at the very top of our beautiful personality circle, we have type number nine, the peacemaker. Nines are easygoing, self-effacing types, characterized as receptive, reassuring, agreeable, and complacent. Their basic fear is of loss and separation, while their basic desire is to have inner stability and peace of mind. Type nines at their core are creative, optimistic, and supportive, but very often lose their inner voice in favor of going along with others in order to keep the peace. Type nines usually come across as very zen, gentle, and quiet, integrating so many positive personality traits into one flexible package. However, this constant desire to avoid disturbance and conflict often lead to nines losing themselves, unsure of what they truly want in this world. In the Nancy Drew series, I see Rachel Hubbard from Warnings at Waverly Academy, Dave Gregory from Secret of Shadow Ranch, Emily Crandall from Secret of the Old Clock, and Grigor Karakinos from Labyrinth of Lies as classic type nines. All of these characters are, there's no other way to describe them, nice. They are kind to Nancy and others. They are forgiving, sweet, and amiable. And they do their best to never rock the boat. They shift according to the desires of others and or retreat in order to not intrude on the desire of others. Type nines, similarly to type twos, seem to function primarily as buddy characters. They're likable and trustworthy, willing to listen to Nancy and make us feel all warm and fuzzy. They're helpful and generally not terribly suspicious, but rather act as a support system by helping to establish a feeling of calm within the storm, something that can be incredibly beneficial to Nancy and fellow detectives in the course of solving mysteries. And there you have it, fellow detectives. The Enneagram personality typing system as explained by the Nancy Drew PC game series with a healthy twist of character and storytelling analysis. I would be so curious to hear if you are familiar with this personality system, what type you are, and what you think about my sorting and analysis of the Nancy Drew characters. Do you agree with me about how different character personalities are used as part of the storytelling in the games? And again, if you want to become more familiar with the subtleties of the Enneagram, I've linked all of my sources in the description box down below. And if you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.